couple of weeks ago you were dog hungry. You've been waiting for this game for a while? Uh, yeah, eight days. <laughs> eight days. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, uh, we're certainly not satisfied and um, that's... I can only communicate what the players tell me, so they're not really my words. The players are saying we're really hungry to play and, and we're not satisfied and certainly we're, we're pleased with what we've been able to do, but we understand there's a lot of challenges that keep coming at you and um, we narrowed down to the Western Bulldogs this week. We, we just finished a preparation on them. You know, their pressure is really strong. They've got a distinct game style, and uh, they're up and about, and they're confident, and they'll be looking for our scalp as much as we'll be looking for theirs. So two equal forces meet, um, and in the day action's going to get it done. What how, did you, how did you think St Kilda went about doing what they did, and what can you take from that? Yeah, uh, not too much. I, I don't look at the other teams too much. I just look at really what the Bulldogs did. Yeah, obviously, the Saints... Uh, some of it's not complicated, win the ball and move it well and um, play with intensity. So, yeah, we certainly aim to play with intensity. We aim to win the ball um, and we aim to make them defend in a manner that sort of separates them a little bit, I suppose. But, um, yeah, we'll focus on our footy all week. 90% of the week is about our football and we drip feed that and improving it. And then we just did, what, 20 minutes then on the opposition. So... Um, yeah, we'll continue to focus on ourselves and improving our football, but respect the opposition. They surprised a lot of people in the football world. Are they surprised yourself, you know, given where they've come from last year? Yeah, I don't worry about making too many predictions or looking at the opposition. I've got my hands full in my own backyard. So all I know is I never roll up a game thinking I'm going to beat anyone. So we prepare equally for all opposition. So, I mean, you do take an interest because it's a new coach, but clearly there's a Hawthorne influence on the way they move the ball. So you understand those things and you look for those things. and um, So, yeah, I have no predictions for them. How's Luke uh, looking? Definitely yeah, good. I just got feedback. He's keen to play. If he gets through training, he's named. Uh, he'll fly and play. So, um, yeah, we've we just got to tick that last box or jump that last hurdle, whatever cliche you want me to throw at you. But um, <laughs> if he gets through, he should play, yeah. Does it, does it have to be Alex Pierce that comes out, or can they play in the same team? With yeah, no, Alex is named. It's, they've got three tall forwards, um, which is you know Stringer, Cramery, and um, you know Boyd. So well, th there's an opportunity for us to play the three, no doubt. Is the six-day week a factor next week at all in any decision making on Luke? Or you don't worry about it? Yeah, no, that's we always have a an eye to the future, but I mean you get caught up in the future and. You know, the, the moment gets lost. So we'd like to stay in the moment. Um, yeah, not particularly. Do you, yeah, it's a good point, though. You're, uh, maybe I should start engaging you because you seem to look ahead and plan pretty well. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting point. There's well done. <laughs> There's been a bit of talk this week about those final half laid outs. Have you been discussing that as, as a team? Yeah, so can you ask that again? About the, the final half laid outs, you know, is that a conscious thing trying to save some energy? Have you been talking yeah. about it at all? Yeah, not particularly. I can guarantee you we got all the data. We ran as hard in the first quarter as we did in the last quarter. So, and actually our, our performance on running was our strongest and most consistent for the six rounds because we can plot the six and every quarter and metres per minute. So. Um, it certainly wasn't due to that, it's certainly to do with some ball use, some poor kick-ins and some poor decisions without the ball that just opened us up a little bit. Um, and specifically we've um, won three quarters of last quarters and we kicked, had 12 shots against Melbourne and, and Geelong and so um, yeah, I think there's certainly been uh, Sydney the third quarter, um, West Coast the last quarter, I think we were 70 points up or something and last week's last quarter. So there's certainly not halves in it, but we know, and I've shared that with the players, a lot of noise here, but here's the facts. You're running really well. So um, yeah, it's a non-issue for us. Ross, you mentioned um, wanting to play guys like Tommy Sheridan and Hayden Crozier. How delicate is that balancing act? Um, and potentially is there guys who might miss games who probably don't deserve to go out? No, no, whoever deserves to play plays, so. We've got high integrity to our selection. We don't gift games. But what I'm saying is those guys were really important for us. Tommy played round one, and, and they are part of the future. Um, so, you know, Tommy's been named in the squad. 
um, hopefully he'll get an opportunity. And um, you know, Crozier had had some injuries and interrupted, but last year he forced his way in and made it to bore out. So. I mean, by admission, he's a slow start and a couple of injury hiccups. So that's what gets lost a little bit. Sometimes injury derails them, a bit like Alex Pierce. We knew, but every time we got going, he's had three stress fractures, Alex Pierce. So, you know, he'd be more advanced in it than he is now, you know. So, um, yeah, our youth's important, but they're coming four year players like Sutcliffe has established himself and Neil and Tabernard's coming in and established himself. And, you know, Sheridan's a part of that group and um, Crozier as well. So, um, we, for our future, we'd, we'd love them to force their way in. So, um, and they've been able to do that. We'd just like them to um, get a good run of it. Tommy would have been in from round one, except he hurt his calf, didn't he? So, um, it's a good point. We really value them, and you know, but we certainly just don't push people out who deserve their spot. I mean, at the end of the day, it's their careers would be quite flippant, and then they wouldn't really trust their coach or match committee. On that same note, uh, what about Mazungu then? You know, I guess injury kind of derailed his pre-season, played a couple of awful games, mm. a sub. Where's he at? Yeah, that, that's exactly where he's at. Yeah, he, he's been sub, he, he played quite well at Peel, but people in there are doing the job, so he's going to have to persist and persevere until he can create an opportunity or one opens up. Can you look at it, I guess, on the bright side, no one wants injuries, I guess, but they might come. They will come. Those, those guys, yeah. you know, ready, right in the, in the wings. As night follows day, they will come. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, it is good that we've got some of the calibre of Sheridan, um, Tendai and, and Crozier, um, Connor Blakely, just to name a couple of the, the running type players and Brady Gray that can come in and, and step up. That's really important. There's no doubt about that. Premierships. Um, and, and great campaigns that won by about 30, 32 players, bona fides. You, you can't get it done with 22. Yeah. When we talk about the mental side of the game, um, winning streaks like this have a different uh, different edge, I suppose. Is there anything you've learned from the fast start of St Kilda? Yeah, in regard to... Yeah, you're just keeping everyone on track and making sure nobody wavers. Well, I think just the point you've alluded to is their spots up for grabs, it's their prof profession and they value their spots. So and there's, there's people desperate and hungry to get in. So that that certainly helps. And, and look, it's only six games to be truthful. I mean, the Saints, we won 19 in a row, so, um, or 18, something like that. Um, so yeah, six is not much, is it? As well, Crowley dealing with it over the weekend, I suppose. It's yeah, look, it's a significant day. day. He's looking forward to, um, not looking forward, I think that's the wrong term. It's, um, he'd like it resolved one way or the other. That's certainly going to occur in, in time. And, and the first step of that is the hearing on Monday, which I think is in camera. So, look, he would be stressed. You know, we don't like to make assumptions, but we know it's a stressful situation. And it's disappointing he's found himself in that, but he, he's worked his way into it. He's, you know, and then day he's accountable and, um, you know, he'll, he'll get his opportunity to put his case forward. and and have a fair hearing, and I think that's all you can ask for. Yeah, do you expect to have him at any point this year, or you still don't really know, it's still so up in the air? Yeah, I think I know as much as you. It's um, out of our hands and out of my jurisdiction, and, you know, Asada aren't ringing me up and saying, this, we haven't heard the case yet, but this is what's going to happen, Ross. I, I think I'm sitting here waiting for the outcome like you are. You know. Has there been spending much time at the club? Yeah, yeah, he's been consistent. He's had a few um, injury concerns, and because what he's been doing is, he goes away and just um, runs a lot on his own, you know, to, to try and keep up. So he's just sort of strained his calf. So he's been in rehab a little bit. But yeah, he's, 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 it's not a good situation. You know, it's disappointing and, and we, we lose a valuable player. And, but if he's been trying to contribute in his way, which is to stay positive, help our young players with our game plan and come to hand. and. Which shows the character of the man. He's being challenged, but he's still been able to get outside himself and try and contribute in ways to the group, which is really um, a good sign for him, but a really difficult thing to do. So it, it's been good to see, really. After the game on the weekend, you mentioned you've been in, in awe of some of the work the Bulldogs have done this season. What in particular yeah. has impressed you about them? And well, I think it's self-evident to all of us, isn't it? You know, they go to Sydney and win in the wet. It's pretty difficult to do. You know, they got hold of Adelaide. Well, their, their pressure's been elite, and their, their centre forward pressure's been elite. Um, and, you know, the ability to come through the turmoil of the summer and, and galvanise um, and have strong leadership um, by Murphy 
and their coach, um, and Boyd's back to his best, and Morris was there. So, and the young players are, are really believing. So I think when you see a group, but that's been a four-year work, at which Luke admits himself, and he's come in and put some great strategies in and, and got him playing with real team spirit. So um, it's really evident what they're doing, and I think that's awesome, isn't it? It's hard. We all know there's 18 clubs trying to do it, and there's about 12 that would be like to be in the bulldog spot. So it's a really good performance. And tactically, what, what have you noticed they've done different this season? Yeah, I, it's hard for me to sort of comment in this forum, to be honest. I just said, tactically, they're putting on really good pressure, winning the ball really well and, um, and scoring well and defending well. Is it a different sort of challenge when you come up against a team that's had a change of coach? Yeah, I thought I spoke to that before. You know, you take an interest in their style. You know, they're going to have some hallmark, hallmarks of Hawthorne, how they use the ball and set up. There's no doubt about that um, without going into too much detail. And certainly he's added his own little twist. And, you know, that last year they were a bit more congested and their backs played differently, so they defend in a different manner. But um, at the end of the day, and this is the classic point, everyone wants to talk about the game in abstract term and tactics. Let's understand what gets it done. It's great effort and, and men that compete, and that's what the Bulldogs are doing. Just have any thoughts on the fixture proposal that was raised this week? No? Yeah, no, I don't, because what we do as a club is anything that goes to the AFL, we put in an official submission. We don't run any potential thoughts or agendas through through the media when, when it comes to those sort of situations. So it's inappropriate for me to sort of go there. Yeah. Just back on Luke, is he due to do a full? Yeah, you're welcome to sit and watch, yeah. He'll hopefully do the full session, yeah. And Zach got through the week, okay, and he'll play? Again, yeah. Who? Zach, Zach Dawson. Dawson. No, he won't play this week. Um, but he's out there training. He's feeling really good. We just thought, give him some more build-up. He just pulled up a little bit sore in an unrelated spot. So I just put him back like a day. But he's in really good shape. He, he'll train today. But most of our waffle, because they play tomorrow, won't come into the last drill. So, yeah, you're welcome to stay. Yeah, you filmed a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool.